In our first session, we want to uh, work with the what I've entitled the introductory lecture on wisdom, available to you in your portal materials. I want you to get that out, and I want us to, again, our litany, every time we come to class, it will be crucial for you not to skip over, if you're watching this online, not to fast forward. I want you to participate and say out loud, just like we're doing in class, this material. In order to, repetition, repetition is about the only way some people can memorize or keep something in mind. And if you're going to gain what I'm trying to teach you, uh, which is thy word have I hid in my heart that I might not sin against thee. And if we're going to have that word available, we're going to have to be saying it over and over and over until it becomes muscle memory, but this time memory, memory. So it's not slipping out. I'd like it to uh, pop up whenever you do contrary to it in the future. So let's begin together reading Psalm 34.1 and let's look at what we're saying here. Together, I will bless the Lord at all times. His grace shall continually be in my mouth. Let's talk about it. Look at it again. I will. If you look at your Hebrew text, if any of you are able to do Hebrew through the software that's now available, this is a cohortative. It's more than a simple declaration. It is a polite way of command. You can say in a cohortative, let's hurry up or we'll be late. Now, that is so much nicer in tone and force than a imperative. Hurry up! Now both are commands. But one is a polite command, and the polite one is the cohortative, and the other is just the command. Do it. And the psalmist, inspired by the Holy Spirit, is told to command himself you are told through scripture in this verse to get with it. It's a command, polite command, that you need to talk to yourself and say this to yourself. I will. I will what? Bless the Lord. Now, what's this word bless? It is to think, to say, praiseworthy, positive things about the Lord. And frequently you have people, what if I don't feel like it? What if I'm not in the mood? What if I'm just depressed? What if I'm feeling blue? What if I uh, just heard the most horrible news? Well, this verse says, at all times... <coughs> There is no exception. There is no time when God does not expect us to talk to ourselves and make ourselves focus on positive, praiseworthy things about God. So it's not a suggestion. It's not a simple statement that David made. And if that's the way he felt, good for him. This is an inspired word polite command for each of us to start talking to the inner person that's in your head and that you are those thoughts I will say it with me I will bless the Lord when at all times so how can you murmur how can you complain how can you gripe how can you talk about the negative, non-praiseful, unhappy situations if this verse is your controlling verse. Now, I'm not telling you you cannot talk to your parents about your problem. I'm not telling you you cannot talk to your Lord about your problem. I'm not telling you there's not a place for a counselor. But other than those authority figures, 
you and I in our daily life live right up here. We live right up here. Most of our conversation takes place right here, hopefully. If that's not true of you, people behind your back call you a motor mouth. You're somebody who whatever pops in your brain comes out your mouth. There aren't many of those kind of people, and those kind of people generally don't have many friends. And you don't want to be that kind of person. So for most of us, most of our conversation comes right here. And you and I are commanded by God to bless the Lord. Now, what does that mean? Does that mean you're supposed to say in your head, bless the Lord, 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 bless the Lord. It didn't say, it doesn't mean that, that you go around like a little person I knew that didn't have all their intelligence and they... And this adult walked around saying, no, 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 no. And I, as a little child, heard that, and so, what would you do with your brother? You would, no, 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 And act twerpy and unkind, as little kids sometimes do, if parents don't see them. You're not to be weird, as just saying, Bless the Lord, bless the Lord, bless the Lord, bless the Lord. Bless the Lord, bless the Lord! It, I, it doesn't mean that. It means to refocus. Don't allow thoughts that are negative to remain here. Do not focus on your problems. Do not focus on the sad. Do not focus on the things that irritate you, even though they are true. You all share your problems. Not really. You have some friends that you feel you can trust. Is God pleased with that? Have you prayed over that? What is your negative words and your problems doing to that other person? Well, they're my friend. I expect them to say, ah, oh. <clears throat> it's somebody that I can dump my concerns. Well, that's what God is supposed to be for us, students. And if God is not that for you, there's probably something that tells you something. It tells you God is not your dearest friend, contrary to popular God. Jesus is my dearest friend. Baloney. You share your most intimate secrets with your dearest friend. And Jesus said, when you go in to pray, close the door, which means there's a time and a place for casting your care on the Lord. You go in, you pray, you talk about your cancer, you talk about your family problems, you talk about your lack of work, you talk about... You all the negative stuff that's impacting your life and you cast your care on the Lord. You cry, you feel blue, you feel sad, whatever you do, do it with the Lord. And Jesus said, when you come out, close the door, wash your face, anoint your head with oil, which is put on the joy of the Lord. And quote, I will bless the Lord at all times. His praise, say it with me, His praise shall continually be in my mouth. How are you? You've just been told you have fourth stage cancer. How are you? How do you do Psalm 34 1? I'm happy in the Lord. I'm blessed beyond anything I deserve. That's blessing the Lord at all times, and the joy of the Lord is your strength. But I want everybody to know I'm going to die. Well, where do you find that in Scripture? That sounds all about poor me, and please feel sorry for me, and I want to dump all of my sad news on you because I'm all about me, and I'm dying. 
Oh, my brother David called me three weeks ago and told me he's dying. Yesterday I called him. He says, I don't have months, I have weeks. Now, what am I supposed to do? That's my brother. It's not your brother. It's my brother. So I, would, I should, the world tells me, be depressed, be bummed out, be down, be sad. Uh, be all upset and then wonder who's next in our family and, and all of that. And that's unbiblical. That's unbiblical. I will bless the Lord at all times. So I said to my brother David, I said, David, how do you want me to pray for you? I want to pray the way he wants me to pray. He says, I just pray that God's will be done. I said, I'll do it. I had prayer with him on the phone. You know, he's not supposed to die. None of us plan for him to die within weeks. But it's happening. Bad things happen to good people. Should I say, oh, I can't study. I, I just can't. I don't feel like teaching. I don't feel like doing... I, I'm so sad. That is self-indulgence. That's self-centeredness, students. And that's exactly what the world says is normal and okay. And everybody's going to say, poor you. And that's totally <coughs> unbiblical thinking and behavior. So I'm telling you, you're not the only one who knows bad things. You're not the only one who has problems in their family. You're not the only one who has pressure. My question to all of us, do you care about minding God? Minding God begins with your thought processes of your students. This is what wisdom is all about. It's not so you can make smarter decisions, simply that you can make smarter decisions, and it is about that. It's not simply so you will know how to tell other people how to run their life better, and it is about that. It is begins with in here, in here, learning how to cope with life in a biblical manner. So, this is what should have been taught to you as children growing up, all these verses and things we're going to learn in this class. Ideally, if your parents had to practice them and made sure that you practiced them and said them to you over and over and over, you wouldn't find changing so difficult. You would already be a praiseful, positive, happy in Jesus person, not dependent upon what's happening around you for your joy. <laughs>